Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to do a rifle cartridge review on the legendary 4570. Stay tuned. In 1873, the United States Army replaced the 5070 with the 4570. And in the year 2023, it's still here. Pretty amazing to think of its longevity. In fact, I can't think of anything that compares with the longevity of the 4570. There's some really old cartridges that are still around today, like the 30-06, even going further back, the 7x57 Mauser, 6.5x55 Swede, and so on and so forth. There's some really old cartridges. But way before all them, in 1873, was the 4570. Now, of course, in 1873, the Springfield Armory designed this new cartridge, the 4570, to shoot out of their new trapdoor rifle. Of course, it was black powder. Black powder would not become relevant until the late 1880s, and so this was a black powder cartridge originally. Now, cartridges like the 4570 were designed in Sharps rifles and trapdoor rifles and rifles like that. But in 1886, of course, John Browning, working for Winchester, designed the 1886 Winchester, which was capable of shooting that 4570. They had determined that the 1873 and even the 1876 wasn't really made for or quite stout enough for that 4570 load. And so in 1886, it was developed for that 4570. And really ever since then, it's synonymous with a lever action rifle. However, it's come out in several other varieties, including a lot of single shot rifles. But the lever action and the 4570 have become quite a notorious combo. Now, of course, when smokeless powder was invented that could have a burn rate that was suitable for rifle cartridges, a lot of your older rifle cartridges started to convert over and the 4570 was no exception. So in the majority of its history, it's been a smokeless powder cartridge, even though it was not originally designed for that. And like I said, I can't think of another cartridge that's still relevant today that's as old as the 4570. Now you might find a Uberti replica in some obscure cartridge that's older than the 4570, or you might even get, you know, an 1894 Winchester or an 1873 Winchester brand new uh, from FNN Browning today that maybe has an older cartridge, but they're not relevant. It's a very kind of a one-off, kind of a random thing, but that 4570 is still very common. There are several rifle manufacturers that chamber for it even today, primarily in lever action rifles. Now, because the 4570 originally came out as a black powder cartridge in some really old rifles, not like our modern day high pressure rifles, it has a max PSI of only 28,000, which does limit the cartridge, especially when you buy factory ammo. Now, if you hand load for the cartridge, you can, of course, get the higher pressure, but the 4570 case is pretty thin. And there are some brass manufacturers that have come up with some thicker walled cases that will help you get higher pressure. But from its inception, the 4570 was never designed for longer ranges or to shoot a high pressure round with high velocities. It's gonna have moderate velocities and it's for pretty close ranges. In fact, it's great for hunting deer in the brush, I would say, or for in the woods in close quarters hunting. Now the 4570, of course, is great for whitetail deer hunting, for hog hunting, for lots of applications in our modern day. It took a lot of bison in the West back in the day. And of course it was developed by the military to be a man stopper. And it will definitely do that. It has significant power. And I guess in a fantasy world where dinosaurs are roaming around, you might even pick a 4570. That's what the protagonist picked in Jurassic World. He picked a Marlin lever action in 4570. A 4570's gonna probably have similar recoil to a seven rim mag or a 300 wind mag. Uh, 
Also because it comes out in a lot of maybe carbine, you know, shorter, lighter weight lever actions, that'll add to the recoil a little bit. But it's overall, it's, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and look at some of the numbers and see how it compares to some other notable cartridges. Now when the 4570 first came out, the 45 denotes 45 caliber, the 70 denotes 70 grains of black powder. And it originally shot a bullet around 405 grains. Today, even though Nosler just has this one uh, bullet listed here, there's tons of different bullets ranging from, you know, 300 to well over 400. I've even seen some, I think there's an Underwood bullet at 430, and I've even heard of some 500 grain bullets. So some super heavy hard cast bullets on down to a ballistic silver tip bullet here, you know, 300 grain. So actually is well, pretty versatile and, and probably more versatile than you would think. All right, here's the 4570. Now it's denoted as strong action in the Nosler reloading manual, which means to get these velocities, you're gonna have to have, you know, the, the right type of rifle and, and good modern brass. As you can see, it's a rimmed cartridge, but even past the rim at the web or base of the cartridge, it's still a half inch wide. Not extremely long, it would easily fit in a modern day short action, but it's it's pretty wide, holds a decent amount of powder. With this 300 grain round nose bullet, it has about 64 grains of powder capacity. It has a one in 20 inch twist rate, which is about standard for the cartridge. And you're gonna get around 23 absolute top, maybe even less than that as max velocity and that's in a 24 inch barrel just an fyi it once again clarifies its strong actions will be the 1895 marlin browning 1886 sharps 1874 not the original but a replica and the winchester 1886 will work as well 1885 single shots will work if they're in good condition thoroughly checked out by a competent gunsmith and then it lists even stronger actions, of course, will be fine, like the Ruger number one and number three, Browning 1885, and the Mauser 98 will have no issues. I think an interesting comparison would be the 3030 Winchester, which is old, not as old, but pretty old. Also a rimmed cartridge with similar design as far as the round nose bullets. With 150 grain, that's half the weight going, what do you know? almost exactly the same velocity. Now that is in a 20 inch barrel, so you might be able to get a little bit more velocity, but for all intents and purposes, similar velocity, yet the 4570 is doing it with double the weight of the bullet. Now another popular lever action rifle is the 1892 carbine that shoots pistol cartridges. And you might think, well, I wonder if the same bullet out of say a 44 rim mag would be about the same as a 4570. The answer is not even close. It's only going about 1400 feet per second max compared to that 2200 with the 4570. Of course, the 45 Colt that came out basically the same time. You might wonder, is, is it anywhere similar? And the answer is absolutely not. What about a similar caliber, but in a Magnum cartridge like the 458 Winchester Magnum? How does it compare? Well, in Nostler's manual, not a good comparison, but here's a 500 grain bullet and it's still almost going the same speed. So the 458 Win Mag is no comparison to the 4570. They're just in two different ballparks. Here's the 4570 compared to the 3030. Here it is next to the 308. Next to the 30 6 Here it is compared to a 223. A 6.5 Creedmoor and a 50 BMG. All right, so you saw the numbers there and you see that it's, it's, it packs enough of a punch to still be relevant after all this time. What are the modern day applications today? Well, the 4570 has basically taken probably every game animal in the entire world, including the big five in Africa. You definitely want to have the right bullet for the right application. But And you definitely want to know what your distance is going to be because it's not a long-range target round, of course. It's not good for long-range hunting, in my opinion. But your 
Within the ethical distance that you should be hunting with a 4570, you have the right bullet and with good shot placement, you literally can take any animal in this world. I personally think even today it would be a great hog hunting cartridge, especially like in timber. Say you've got a lot of feral hogs that are overpopulating and destroying your habitat and you're in timber and you're trying basically just to eradicate them. A lever action 4570 would be a great uh, cartridge for that. You know, it would also be good for hunting whitetail deer, just get the right bullet for it. Um, it could be a little excessive, maybe more recoil than you really need. Um, 3030 will work great for that as well. But if you want, if you like a 3030, you like hunting with a lever action, and you just want to take a next step up in power. Maybe not the next step up, but you want to take a significant step up in power and caliber and bullet weight, uh, it would be a great option. And if you wanted to, of course, you still could go to Africa today. I'm pretty sure anything over a 375 H&H in caliber um, is, is going to work for that. And I believe you can still use a 4570. Some countries or provinces in Africa might have different rules. Check on that. But, but if you wanted to, you could still hunt with dangerous game today with 4570, whether it's African dangerous game or whether it's a Kodiak brown bear on the coast of Alaska, you could do it. It would definitely work. It might not be my first choice, but it would definitely do it and has done it. I would call the eight millimeter LaBelle the father of all modern rifle cartridges because it came up, the French that developed it came up with smokeless powder and the Spitzer bullet and that was in 1886. So I can't say that the 4570 is the father of all cartridges today, it's not. It's actually from an older era of black powder, but yet it's a survivor. Somehow it's, it's, it's stayed relevant today. I mean, yes, the 3030 is still around today, but it was 1895, and it was literally developed as a smokeless rifle cartridge. Um, so besides, you know, like some rim fires, like the 22 short and 22 long, I can't think of any cartridge that's, that's lasted as long as it has and, been, and stayed relevant, especially as a center fire cartridge. And the 4570 is as good today as it ever has been, actually probably better. There's a much bigger uh, array of powders and bullets to use. Even some of those brass that I was talking about with thicker walls and higher pressure and today's metallurgy and modern rifles are just going to be stronger than ever. So 4570 is definitely viable in the year 2023. And I salute you and take off my hat to the 4570. Quite an amazing cartridge. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and comment below if you have experience with the 4570. Um, what have you used it for? Um, hunts you've been on, game animals you've taken. I'd love to hear all about it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. More videos like this coming out. Check the links in the description below. Got several links to some other stuff that I've got going on. Love you to check them out. And I hope you have a great day. And until next time, take care.